Welcome to Game Theory. This is Section 22, Extensive Forms of General Games. If you're following along in your text, again, this is Section 22. Uh, we'll be, this is uh, the first of two videos where we're talking about extensive form. This talks about the theory. Uh, the second video will talk about some examples. This will be followed by a third video where we'll talk about the normal form. So previously, extensive forms or game trees could only describe sequential games with perfect information. And it's important to know here that the idea of sequential games where players are taking turns and perfect information, being that players had to know the options that other players had, is a very restrictive sort of situation. So what we want to do is apply the concept of extensive form, but we want to allow in complexity for simultaneous aspects of games. So let's recall for ourselves the extensive form. So in particular, our vertices indicate the position and players' turns at those positions. So the extensive form or our game tree is built uh, out of vertices and edges. Uh, the random vertices have outward edge probabilities at sum to one. We have payoffs to the players are located at the end vertices. To add in the extensive form complexity, we need the comp concept of information sets. And that's the key point here is that we'll have the idea of information sets. An information set has the following three properties. So first off, the information set is only known to a single player. And this is important because a single player only knows what moves they have, and it only contains moves for that player and no other player. So information sets are also uh, disjoint, they don't overlap. So players cannot be in, have two different information sets at the same time. And all vertices in the information set, so all positions, have the same moves. So the same name of moves and the same number of moves. This is because an information set indicates that they don't know necessarily what has happened for the player before them. So to illustrate the idea of information sets, let's take a simultaneous game namely the prisoner's dilemma, and let's turn this into the extensive form using the game tree and the concept of information sets. So on the left is the, the, inf is the normal form matrix for the prisoner's dilemma, where A and B are two prisoners, they can choose to cooperate and get two years in prison each, or they can choose to defect. If they both defect, they get one year in prison, or if one defects and one cooperates, then we get zero and three as the respective payoffs. So player A, if we were to set this up as a sequential game, player A and player B, as we're building our game tree, looks something like this, where player A has two options and player B has two options. So player A can choose to cooperate or can choose to defect, and player B can choose to cooperate or can choose to defect. The key point, however, is that we note that if the players knew what each other would do, then it makes no sense to have them choose to do something else. Uh, so for example, if, pl if player B knew that A would cooperate, then there's no sense for player B to cooperate because player B could know that A would get more points by defecting. So in this sense, we have the information set here indicated by circling the two vertices such that player B does not know what player A has chosen. So the information set indicates on the extensive form that player B does not know player A's choice. And this is what makes the game tree uh, represent a simultaneous game instead of a sequential game. So we can still get the same information that we had from our table, but now we can represent it as a sequential game. Or excuse me, represent it in the same form as a sequential game. This allows us to use visual representation of the extensive form, but allows us to calculate Nash equilibrium as we will in the normal form. The next two examples in the following video will demonstrate again how to build the extensive form with simultaneous games. And then the second example in the next video will show how to analyze subgames to give examples about potential payoffs. 
If you have any questions, please contact your instructor. Uh, this PDF will also be included with this video.